Good evening, everybody. How's everybody doing tonight? I don't know about y'all, but I worked outside all day today, and when the storm came in, I was praising. I was like, oh, thank you, God. It felt so good. I don't like the rain because I grass, but it was because it finally cooled off. So if everybody would, we're about to start praise and worship. So if everybody would, please stand up. And I just want to invite you, if you want to come up front, stay in your seats or whatever, just however you feel like you need to praise the Lord tonight. That's, that's why we're here right now is to press in and to seek God. Lord, I pray that you would move in this time of worship. I pray that, that you would just meet us here. I pray that you would begin to change things in the atmosphere that we came in here with. Lord, I praise you for who you are and what you've already done because it's already been enough. It's in Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Like we're going places we've never been Like we've left all we've known To chase our voice on the wind We're not lost We're just looking for you And if it looks like we've lost All composure and pride If it feels like we laid Our strength to the side If we seem desperate It's just kind We're going places we've never been Like we left all we know To chase our voice on the wind When I lost We're just looking for you And if it looks like we've lost All composure and pride And if it feels like we laid Our strength to the side If we seem desperate It's just kind You're looking for a city, for a place to show your glory. Look no further, we're available. If you're searching for a people who are hungry for revival, look no further, we're available. Sounds like your kingdom's all we're talking about If it sounds like we tuned all the other noise out We're still listening, we're just listening for you And if our praise and our prayers seem outrageous and bold And if our worship gets too big for a building to hold
searching for a people who are hungry for revival. Look no further, we're available. If you're looking for a city, for a place to show your glory, searching for a people who are hungry for revival look no further we're available
Spirit, sound, and rushing wind, fire of God, fall within, Holy Ghost, breathe on us, we pray. As we repent, turn from sin, revival embers smoldering, breath of God, fan us into flame. Sing that again. Spirit, sound, and rushing wind, fire of God, fall within. Holy Ghost, breathe on us, we pray. As we repent and turn from sin, revival embers smoldering, breath of God, fan us into. Cause we need a fresh wind The fragrance of heaven Pour your spirit out Pour your spirit out Oh holy anointing The power of your presence Pour your spirit out Pour your spirit out 
For hearts that burn with holy fear, purified in faith indeed, refiner's fire, strength in what remains. So we, the church, who bear your light, lamp of flame, city bright, king and kingdom come is what. of heaven pour your spirit out pour your spirit out oh holy anointing the power of your presence pour your spirit out pour your spirit out just let this be your prayer and we need a fresh wind the fresh of heaven pour your spirit out pour your spirit out oh holy anointing the power of your presence pour your spirit out pour your spirit out let all the redeemed
fragrance of heaven pour your spirit out pour your spirit out amen how many know we need a fresh wind from heaven tonight anybody have that prayer just pour it out holy spirit come on we don't we just needed to pour it out in our lives amen i think it's interesting they sang two songs tonight about revival. Anybody looking for a, just a great big move of God? Come on, I need revival in my life. We need it every day, every moment. And revival is not just a three-day man meeting and all or whatever, a week long and all that's great and there's a time and a place for that. But I just need God to do something new. I need him to do something fresh. I need him to pour out something in my life. Come on, I don't just need him on Sunday. I need him on Monday and Tuesday and Wednesday. I need him to do a fresh thing and to blow that Ruach breath of God in my life every day. Come on, anybody else? One more time, give the Lord some praise tonight. We love you, Jesus. Amen. You can be seated if you're able to. If you can't, just keep jumping and chatting with me. Amen. It's so good to see you today from midweek. Welcome home. We're glad that you're here with us or watching online on the online campus. Amen. I'm glad that you, able, you were able to make it out. We had a little bit of rain today. We finally needed, but I think the saints are a little bit scared of rain. Some of them feel like they're going to melt, I guess, because they stay home when it rains, but uh, you made it. Holler at your neighbor say, you made it. I'm proud of you. It's good to see you in God's house. In fact, while you're hollering at your neighbor, why don't you find, you might have to twist and shout since there's a few out tonight, but why don't you turn and greet a few people, shake a few hands and tell somebody good evening, good evening and it's good to see them tonight. Amen, family. So glad to see you tonight. Anybody thankful for the physical rain, but also the spiritual rain, amen? I'm thankful to serve a God, and he is God of overflow, amen? And um, I just want to pray over this offering today. If we go ahead and get a couple of helpers up here, I pray that whatever you're believing for tonight, God's going to overflow it. Can have somebody say overflow? Overflow. Let's pray. Father, we love you, God, and we thank you so much for your presence in this house, God. God, I thank you and give you praise in advance, God, for the overflow that's going to come for each and every person in this house today. God, we thank you, Lord, that you know all of our needs, God, before we even know them. God, we just ask, God, that you would touch each and every family today, God, those who have to give, those who do not have to give, God, that you would just touch and meet every need, God, because you are the way maker, the miracle worker, God. God, we give you praise, we give you glory in your house today. In Jesus' name, amen. Passion family, we are so glad that you chose to worship with us today in person and online. My name is Carson and if this is your first time joining us, be sure to fill out the Connect cards. Turn them into the Welcome Center to receive a free gift. Now let's dive into July and see what's happening. On July 21st, we will be having an ice cream bar right outside the church immediately following service. Be sure that you and your family stick around to enjoy some delicious ice cream and fellowship. Next month, we will be launching our C Groups. C Groups are a great way to find a place here at Compassion and feel connected. More announcements to come in service and on our Church Center app, so if you have any questions at all, be sure to see the Welcome Center. If you have any questions or need assistance, be sure to see our Welcome Center. And that's what's happening. Amen. We've got a lot of stuff that's happening. I hope you're informed and know all those things. A couple quick things I want to throw at you before we jump into anything else. This Sunday, somebody say this Sunday, it's going to be a special service. We want you to be here for that. It's going to be such a good day. Got some surprises for you. And also, we're bumping up our Compassion Cares Ministry offering that we normally take up the last Sunday. It's going to be this coming Sunday. So pray about what you want to bring and sow into that. It's going to be such a good day. It's also National Ice Cream day or Sunday or whatever it is, and we don't need any reason to eat ice cream except for that right there. Come on in here. So we're going to have an ice cream bar out front with all kinds of toppings out there, and it's free to you. Just grab one on your way out, and uh, we're going to beat the heat together with a nice ice cream. It's always a lot of fun. We can just gather around the front and, uh, and just help yourself to that. It's going to be great. Don't forget, again, on the 28th, we're going to be uh, opening up the app so that you can join a C group. Those are our small groups here at Compassion uh, August through November is our fall semester, and there's truly some groups for everybody. So make sure you've got that group, uh, rather the app downloaded. It's called Church Center in the App Store. If you've got a smartphone, if you have a dumb phone, don't worry about it. But if you've got a smartphone, download Church Center so you can make sure that you have the app and know how to do all that. Somebody say amen if you got it. Okay, last but certainly not least, next Friday, the 26th, 
Uh, we are doing, uh, our church, we're involved in lots of outreaches, as you may know, throughout the year. And we are doing um, our law enforcement police officer uh, barbecue that we're going to be making up a bunch of dinners. Uh, so we're going to be assembling those next Friday morning, probably around 9 o'clock, I would say. Uh, so our food service coach, Loretta, is going to be here. I'll be here with a few other volunteers. We're going to assemble all those boxes of barbecue dinners with some sides and rolls and some desserts. And we're going to be taking those over to the sheriff's department and to the city center so that we can feed our police officers and just tell them thank you and that we love them and we pray for them. So if you want to help with that, we could use a few more hands. And if you're available, I know a lot of people work on Friday mornings and Friday afternoons, but if you can... Come and hang out with us for a little bit. Help us put some boxes together, and then we're going to take those over and just be a blessing in our community. So if you want to do that, you can see me. Uh, Loretta's not here this evening. Or if you want to catch her Sunday, you can do that too. Uh, this time I'll go ahead and let all of our kids and students be dismissed that are taking off the class, and we get ready to jump into a word tonight. Amen. Send a fresh wind, Jesus. If you have your Bible, you can go ahead and turn with me to the book of Mark chapter 6. No coincidence that we visited here on Sunday. Uh, I'm sure the Lord has just aligned that. I didn't do it on purpose. It's also funny what we're talking about, mentioning some storms and that sort of thing, because I didn't know it was going to be storming when I, wrote, when I put all this together with the Lord. So <laughs> here it is, storming and raining, and we're going to be talking about some of that tonight. Uh, I'm going to try my best. Y'all know I try to do Bible study on Wednesdays, but I'm a little fired up about this. So if I start preaching, y'all just start shouting with me. So I'm going to try, and we're going to see what happens. When you get there, just say, got it. If you don't have it, we'll put it on the screen. Should have it. There we go, on the screen for you. Uh, Mark 6, and let's go to 45 through 51. Okay, immediately. Somebody say immediately. Immediately, right then, all of a sudden, we said Sunday. He made his disciples, meaning Jesus, of course, get into the boat and go back before him to the other side, to Bethsaida, while he sent the multitude away. And when he had sent them away, he departed to the mountain to pray. And now when evening came, the boat was in the middle of the sea, and he was alone on the land. Then he saw them straining at rowing, for the wind was against them. And now about the fourth watch of the night, he came to them walking on the sea. And he would have passed them by. And when they saw him walking on the sea, they supposed it was a ghost. They cried out, for they all saw him and were troubled. But immediately he talked with them and said to them, Be of good cheer, it is I. Do not be afraid. And then he went up into the boat to them, and the wind ceased. They were greatly amazed in themselves beyond measure and marveled. I think we said Sunday that in our scripture, we just talked about how uh, right there at the end that we've never seen anything like this. I love this too. Amazed in themselves beyond measure and marveled. How many just want to see God do some things beyond measure and just be marveled at what Holy Spirit does? Father, we love you. Bless your word tonight. Bless your people. And God, we're grateful that there is help and strength in Jesus. And we just pray that the word would just come and do what the word does. Let it just sharpen our lives, convict where we need it, uh, challenge us, and draw us closer to you. Help us to learn. Teach us something tonight, Holy Spirit. And let us be stronger in our faith as we walk with Jesus every day. We love you. We give you praise for the anointing in the house. And we ask it in Jesus' name. And everybody said, amen. What is the first thing that you think of when you think of the word peace? Maybe you think of, the, of somebody doing this, depending on when you grew up, somebody throwing up the peace sign, or maybe somebody, someone did it like this, depending on <laughs> which era that you're in. Or maybe it's the little symbol with the little circle and the little stick that goes in between it. Maybe that's what you think of. Maybe for you, when you think of peace, you think about being on vacation. Anybody been to the beach or the mountains or anything recently? Yeah, I mean, like, there's such peace at the, at the beach and going to the mountains, and sometimes it's good just to get away. But if you dig in a little bit deeper, though, and, and go to this a little bit further, I think that's really just the surface. We're really just scratching the surface with those things. Uh, it's not really, really uh, this deep kind of peace that's truly available to us in the Lord. How many know there's deeper peace with God? There's deeper peace available to us, and what I'm talking about is peace that we get with God that is peace for your mind, it is peace for your spirit, it is peace in your soul, and it is really, it is really truly peace that just says, no matter what I face or what I go up against in my life, there is still a calmness that washes over me because there's a confidence in me that relies in Jesus and not in my own strength. 
is not in me, it's not in my own self or my own abilities, but it, tr- it truly lies in Jesus. And while we go through seasons and struggles and difficulties down here, I'm telling you, in my walk with God, I've experienced all hell may be breaking loose in my life, but the good news is that I realize that I'm not nervous because God is not nervous. If he is not up there sweating and wringing his hands and hollering at Gabriel saying, hey, bring me a Prozac, I'm about to lose it, I'm, make, I'm getting nervous and I need to calm myself down. Come on, how many know that's not our God? And so because that's not Jehovah, that's not the one that we serve, I don't get nervous because God's not nervous and I still believe that greater is he who is within me than he who is in this world. How many got peace tonight? Somebody just shout amen. Amen. So when we talk about finding peace and finding the peace of God, if you really go to that by definition, the word peace is freedom from disturbance. Another one says it's simply tranquility. Man, how nice would that be to have peace from disturbance just to have some tranquility in your life? Well, the reality is you can. You can have peace and you can have this kind of um, this freedom from disturbance and this tranquility when you take refuge in Jesus. We realize that there's peace in him. The context here in our scripture and the fear that was in the disciples' heart, it really parallels our lives sometimes. It really kind of just collides with what we go through because, I mean, I don't think anybody in here has probably ever been through a storm on the Sea of Galilee in a ship, and maybe you have, but uh, all of us do deal with issues and problems in our lives and what we call these storms that we go through from time to time. We all do that. Everybody has been through some stuff, and when you do Jesus will rescue you out of those of what we call storms of life, just like he did with the disciples. I've seen him do it. God's shown up for me and rescued me from some storms over and over again. And you might be here tonight and feeling like that you are in a different storm. And although you may be in a different storm, the disciples, the reality is, family, you've got the same Jesus. It's a different storm, but it's the same Jesus that still knows how to come walking up and bring in peace. I found out that regardless of the storm that I'm going through, he is still Savior. If he's good enough to save me from one storm, he's good enough to save me from the other. If he's God enough to show up once in my life, he'll be God enough to do it again and again and again. If he's ever moved one mountain, he can do it again and again. If he's ever healed one, saved one, touched one, redeemed one, he can keep doing it. So God will show up. And he still is the Savior that walks on top of what bothers you and I, and that still submits to him. What bothers us will still submit to God. That's the one that you pray to. That's our God. See, when Jesus arrived to the boat, he addresses three areas of their lives here, uh, really like these major concerns for the disciples, three things. And as he did, he was really able to replace their fear with his peace in that moment. They were losing it, freaking out. Scared to death. They done thought they saw a ghost. They didn't, I believe one of the disciples done had Ghostbusters on speed dial. Come on. They were like freaking out and about to just lose it because they didn't thought a ghost was walking up to them. And Jesus replaces all of that fear with peace because we learn that Jesus truly is the ultimate source of peace. Life has plenty of unknowns ahead of us. God knows that, that every single one of us We realize that there are things that happen in our lives. There are things that are going to happen tomorrow and next week that we don't always know what's going to happen. How many would agree, though, that Jesus has already prepared a way? He's already been there. He's already been in your future. We said Sunday the fingerprints of God are already in your future so that when you arrive there, it's not a surprise to God. Amen. It might be a surprise to you, but he's already been there before you ever got there. Jesus knows them all. And so because he knows them all, he is ready and he is also available so that he can give you peace and bring, um, bring about this peace in the troubled storms that you go through in your life. You cannot find this peace that we're talking about at the beach. You can't find it on a cruise ship. You can't find it up in the mountains anywhere, although those things are nice and you ought to take your family or your sugar and go do those things. Come on in here. Those things are great and you ought to spend some time and do that. Get away. Have some time in a place of rest. But this is not that kind of peace, and it's not the same thing. Jesus addresses the fears here first, and he shows them how that he can release peace to be able to take its place. Here's why I feel like I want to tell you all tonight about this. We need to stop jumping to hasty decisions that are caused by fear. We get scared and we get afraid of something and we jump to a hasty decision just because we're afraid of the unknown or we have pain or suffering or problems on every side. If we would stop quickly jumping to those decisions and let the presence of God begin to just move and be our first priority. Listen, 
He will be the source that you need for your peace. If God's not a priority and he's not up here and you find him down here, there's no wonder you don't experience peace. Get no help on Wednesday. There's no wonder that you don't experience peace if he's not first above everything else. Well, I'm going to try A, B, C, and D, and if I can't make that work, I'll visit him down here on E somewhere, and I'll get him on another game plan. Come on, but I'm telling you, everybody wants a quick fix. Everybody wants a quick fix to pain, to fear, to the unknown. Everybody wants a quick fix to turmoil when there's a crisis, marital troubles. When we lose our jobs, we just everybody wants a quick fix. And so what I've seen folk do is they will quickly jump into things like alcohol, stress eating, pills, sexual relationships, all types of other sin and fleshly gratification. But you know what all those have in common? They are only temporary. They only last a little while. They only numb those things. They don't heal it, and they don't bring you any peace. Out of the three things that Jesus addresses on that night, the first thing that he was, let's talk about how he addressed their fear. Aren't you grateful that Jesus doesn't uh, just cover up fears or dismiss them as silly and just act like that you're ridiculous if you're fearful? Yeah, yeah. He, he addresses those things. I love that he doesn't say, y'all are foolish for having fear. It's okay to feel fear, amen, but we don't, we're not operating in a spirit of fear. We feel it and we understand. Sometimes we just get scared and we just get afraid and this is what happened here. Jesus did not... Dismiss this. I've said to you before, though, you don't have to fear the things that fear Jesus whenever Jesus lives inside of you. You don't have to be afraid of those things that tremble at the name of Jesus whenever he lives in your heart. When he said, be of good cheer, what he was actually doing was really addressing every single believer that would call on his name, not just the 12. How was he doing that? Well, the storm, the Bible is telling us here, is under his control, but I can hear somebody saying it right now. You know, don't fear the storms of life. When you're going through something, just don't be afraid of all that stuff. Well, it's easier said than done, Sister Fruit Loop. Come on, somebody. It's easier said when you just look at somebody and say, you know, well, I know your life's falling on the park. Just trust the Lord. You know, you don't have to be afraid. You know, well, that's good advice, Hoss. I'm glad you were here. Come on. I mean, like, you know, you go when it's you going through it in that moment, you know that you can trust the Lord, but sometimes you just get afraid. Sometimes you're just fearful, and it's different when you are in this situation. Anybody ever had somebody trying to encourage you while you're going through something? <laughs> they mean well, and they have good intentions, but you know, you're going through something, and it's awful, and it's keeping you up at night and worrying. You can't even drive down the road for thinking about it, and then you run into somebody, and they're like, you know, well, just trust the Lord with it. Just, you know, just put it in his hands, and God's going to take care of it. Well, that's real good advice, but when it's you going through it, I need something more. I need somebody to get into intercession for me and start really praying and getting a hold of God because I need, so, I need something more than just telling me just trust the Lord because I, while I'm trying to trust the Lord, I'm also having feelings. I'm also being afraid. I'm also struggling. I'm going through some stuff. And, and it's hard for us because you know we realize that the storms of our lives, they're without a doubt under God's control. We know that. Everybody realizes that without a doubt, they're under God's control. The, the problem is we want control. The problem is we know, like, let's say God's got this, but all of a sudden we find ourselves saying, I wish I was in control of this. I want the pain to stop. I want the bleeding to stop. I want the problem to cease. I want this to end. I want control of what I'm going through, but really there are just some things you don't have control over. There are just some things that you go through in life that you don't have the answers for. You just don't have a good enough formulated plan that can get you through it. And we like control and we don't like when we don't have it. Can I tell you though, faith is about trusting an invisible God, watch this, when it's out of your control. Yeah, faith is about trusting God when you don't have control over it, when you can't do anything about it. There are some things you just can't fix. There are some things that in your own strength you can't do. You can't help it. You can't wish it away. You can't pray it away. Let me help you. You can rebuke it until your rebuker breaks down. But at the end of the day, they're not going anywhere. Come on in here. And you're still facing it anyway because it's out of your control. Disciples, absolutely terrified. No doubt of that. They're struggling. They were afraid. They were like, we're getting ready to die. I mean, scared, about to lose our lives. And watch, Jesus uses the very thing that they are so fearful of to be able to come to them, and he demonstrates that he has control of the situation by walking on what they were terrified of. 
I'm grateful to know that everything that causes me trouble is under the feet of Jesus. Everything that I am afraid of, that I struggle with, that I'm worried about, that I'm up late at night wringing my hands trying to take a sleeping pill because I can't even get any rest for thinking about it, that's under the feet of Jesus. It's under his feet. And we serve a real big God. Let me tell you how Job said it. Job said it like this over in chapter 9, verse 5. Yeah, He said, he removes the mountains and they do not know when he overturns them in his anger. He shakes the earth out of its place and its pillars tremble. He commands the sun and it does not rise. He seals off the stars. He alone spreads out the heavens and treads on the waves of the sea. He made the bear, the Orion, and the the Pleiades and the chambers of the south. He does great things past finding out. Yes, wonders without number. If he goes by me, I do not see him. If he moves past, I do not perceive him. If he takes away, who can hinder him? Who can say to him, what are you doing, God? God will not withdraw his anger. The allies of the proud lay prostrate beneath him. Everything, come on, Job said it like this. The Bible said it like this. The earth is the Lord's and the fullness thereof. Job reminded, is reminded in these particular scriptures that there are times when life is absolutely out of your control. But let me take a moment on midweek and remind every single child of God, even though your life may be out of control, Jesus is still in control of all of life. Everything in life he's still in control of. He's not lost his control. It's not out of his control, although it may be out of yours. See, he still walks on the waves of your stormy life. He still has the power uh, against those things that are rising against you. Therefore, there's abs- he, he is absolutely worthy of all of your trust and faith. He's in control. Now, y'all ain't going to like this, but I'm going to share it with you all anyway. There are some storms that may even be sent by him. Oh, God, I can't believe you even would say something like that. Can I tell you, there are moments in life that we need realignment. God knows what to do to get your attention. God knows how to realign you with some things. And sometimes I've had God to come down and have to do it with a chastising. Oh, yeah, I mean, you know, anybody ever been whipped by your parents? Come on, some of this generation today ain't never had their hind ends whipped, and it shows. Come on in here. Uh, <laughs> and so, you know, we did. When we messed up, we got in trouble. We, we, had, we got the belt, the fly swat, you know, the switch, a house shoe. Didn't matter what it was. I mean, it was something, whatever was closest available. <laughs> we got it. And, you know, we knew how to straighten up real quick. Uh, they even started, you know, my mom and dad even started getting to the point to where they just had to look. Anybody's parents ever just had to look? Didn't even have to pick up something to whip you. I mean, like, they just had to look. We knew right then. We got that look, and we just already started crying. (laughs) Oh, Lord. Chastising, it is because you do it because you love your children. God does it because he loves you too much, and sometimes he says you need to be realigned. Sometimes we forget who we are. Sometimes we forget whose we are and who we belong to, and God will have to come in and shift some things in our lives. And he might let things get a little bit rocky. He might cause a few storm clouds to roll in because he's got to do what it takes to get our attention. And the truth is, the storms in life are going to be expected. What God is trying to get us to understand is they don't need to be feared. Because he's the one who's still in control. See, God will allow a storm sometimes to show you he is still the one in control. It's not you. It's not a presidential candidate. It's not the king of England. It's not the House, the Senate, or anybody in Congress. It's not the stock market or your retirement plans. It is still faith in Jesus that is still giving you. Come on, he's he's the provider. We still believe that he is bringing provision in our lives, and he is the God that we are to trust in result of your trust and unshakable faith in him is this it brings you enough power so that you can conquer those things that you're fighting he brings you enough victory for every fight peace whenever you're about to lose your mind storms are always temporary if you're taking notes write that down highlight it put it on a sticky note slap it on your mirror slap it on your forehead i don't care what you do but i need you to understand storms are temporary They don't always last. Can't always be night because at some point the sun is going to rise. And when it does, joy comes in the morning. Happiness is going to be the song that you sing 
again, right? It's Come on, this is a limited duration. It can't always storm like this. And right when the disciples thought that they were about to die, this is it, boys. It's been nice serving with you. This boat's about to sink. We're about to lose it right here. Jesus is walking on top of it, steps over there, and begins to try to show them, I'm really the one who brings peace, and I've got this in control. Anybody ever had God just step into your life right on time? <laughs> I've had some moments where he just stepped right on time, right into my life, and I've just swung by the compassion to tell somebody on a Wednesday night that he is still an on-time God. Yes, he is. Somebody better say amen if you know it. Jesus then secondly addresses their faith in the issue here. So he addresses their faith after he addresses their fear. And on top of this storm, they again thought that Jesus was a ghost. Everybody gets scared. They're all fearful. And after they're so afraid and, and losing their minds, it really gives them almost like this ample reason to believe that if this is Jesus, he must be the one who just showed up to bring me some help. If this is Jesus, I know he came to do one thing. He came to save, to deliver, to help me, and to bring me some victory. He quickly identified himself, and he said, it is I. This is an empathetic personal pronoun is what they call it in the English, in the English language because this was just simply a statement of identification. He had to tell everybody, it is I, it is me, it is, the, it is the Lord. And he basically says this in modern terms, perhaps, hey, fellas, don't fear, the great I am is here. Come on, Jesus said, let me just remind you, I am the one who created the wind and the waves, and I am still the one who knows how to sustain them. If God created them, he didn't only create them and forget about them and just put them to the side. He sustains everything he created. Even every one of the stars that he ever made, he knows them by name. He knows where they are. He knows where they're supposed to be. And, uh, and he, was, he was letting these disciples know, these waves, this storm, they answer to me. Your storm answers to Jesus. It goes through a filter of grace before it ever gets to you so that God can make a way through all of these things that you're going through before it ever even arrives to you as a problem. It's already been through the filter of grace. He's already seen it. Jesus is reminding them of who he is. I am the Lord. As the great I am, he is all powerful in that he has proven time and time again that he is, um, that he is, you know, the, the creation of the world that he just spoke and there it was. He was with God the Trinity, by the way, God the Father, Son, and Holy Spirit, all working at creation and found in Scripture. He was there to be the God that would preserve Noah in the days of the flood. He was there to preserve the Israelites and rescue them out of Egyptian slavery. Everything that you have read about in your Bible is not just a good story or a fairy tale. This is historical events that have happened that are true. You can take God at his word, and he has not changed from any of those things. If he's all-powerful, he also says here that I'm all-present, meaning that when he says, I am, in this moment, he didn't just declare and say, I was. You remember me? As I was. No, he said, I am. And so he declares himself to be the one who is, who is um, ever-present. It's always, it's always good to have the feeling and the reassurance that God is always on time, that he's good all the time, that he's God all the time, and that he shows up all the time. There's never a time that he didn't exist, nor will there ever be. He's God in past and present and future. He's the God who was, the God who is, and he is still the God who is to come. How many know he's still the God who is to come? I'm looking for Jesus. He's coming back. The third thing I want to share on that is that he is also all-perceiving. So all-powerful, all-present, but he's also all-perceiving in that by virtue of the fact that Jesus is God, he knows all things. Nothing escapes his gaze. In fact, Proverbs 15 and 3 said, the eyes of the Lord are in every place. There it is. Keeping watch on the evil and the good. And he sees it all. He knows it all. He's in control of it all. And just because you and I are not, this is no reason for us to begin to stop and cease all of our faith and lose our minds like the disciples did because there's a storm, because there's a challenge or something that's disarray in our lives. Jesus, don't miss this, is saying, as the great I am, he's saying this is what this means for the child of God. And this is why it's so important to realize the the dissecting of the names of God and why he goes by what he does. All of the names that belongs to him are uh, not, not limited to, but right here are some of them, that he is Jehovah Jireh. In other words, he is the Lord who provides. He is Jehovah Roi, which is the Lord, our shepherd. He is Jehovah Shalom, the Lord, our peace. Well, there it is. We just read it. We're just talking about peace tonight. He's Jehovah Rapha, which is the Lord, our healer. He's 
Jehovah Sidkenu, which means the Lord our righteousness. He is Jehovah Shammah, which means the Lord is there. He is Jehovah Nisi, which means he is the Lord our banner. He's Jehovah Makadesh, which means he is the Lord who sanctifies. He is Jehovah Elion, which means the Lord Most High. He is El Shaddai, which means that he's God Almighty. And he's the Alpha and the Omega, which means he is the beginning and he's also the end. It all started with God reigning on his throne and is going to end the very same way. God, in other words, is what we need him to be all the time. If you need something from God and you're going through a season when you have need, God has a name for your need. He is everything. That, there's no wonder we call him the great I am. When you need a deliverer, I am. And when you need a savior, he said, I am. When you need a healer, he said, I am. When you need a redeemer, he said, I am. The list continues and goes on and on. We are really truly never left without an answer because God always has a name for what we need him to be. Lastly, Jesus addresses the disciples in the future. I mean, thankful that God can do that. Yeah, he can address the future. See, when Jesus came to the boat that night, there were certain, these people in the boat, they were just certain their lives were over. They just did. They were preparing to die, and then Jesus told them to plan for the future. Verse 45, he said, he told them to go and get their ship and go over to the other side. He tells them that he knew exactly when and where they were going and when and where they were going to be, how they were going to get there and what time they'd be there. His words were bringing comfort and hope to them in that literally he spoke peace to the present, and he is also doing so for the future. So God does not only speak peace to where you are right now, but God will also speak peace to where you're about to be. God can bring provision before you get there. Yeah, be not afraid. Literally, when he says, be not afraid, he's saying, stop fearing now, and you don't have to fear ever again, because I am the one that is in control. God is on his throne, and he's not shaken. This is amazing. The human perspective always is this. Our future looks bleak. We just don't know. We live our lives every day not knowing what's going on in the future. We have an idea and we try to plan that, but we just truly don't know exactly what could happen. And it may not give you much hope to live your life like that. Um, you know, we, we are seeing some crazy stuff that's going on right now. People are afraid. There are uncertainties. I mean, there's attacks going on in our country against leaders, hatreds towards people because of what they look like or what language they speak. There's attacks on God. There's attacks on the Bible. There's attacks on Christianity. Come on, the list just continues and goes on and on and on. And peace flees from so many people because there are, there are people that are focusing on troubles and not the peace speaker. And we used to sing a song when I was younger, and I still find myself walking around the, the house singing it. We say, I know the peace speaker. I know him by name. Come on, anybody remember that song? And I sing that sometimes, and I just get Holy Ghost bumps come up all over me, and I just feel the presence of God because I realize that I know the God who is still able to speak peace when there is turmoil, when there is chaos, and God still speaks peace. Let's get even more personal, though, for just a second. Whenever we're going through not just things going on as a nation and a whole, but let's talk about whenever we're going through unemployment. Let's talk about whenever we're having trouble in our marriage, whenever we're praying and asking God for kids and we get a false pregnancy test over and over again. When we're looking for our health to be good and all of a sudden you go to the doctor and he comes in and takes his glasses off and folds your paperwork up and he says, I got to share something with you. It's not good. I mean, when we go through these things, I mean, and we have feelings, are we ever going to be free from this addiction? Are we ever going to have, you know, some peace and some comfort and guidance again? And we've all got our struggles. Everybody has got something different going on in our lives. You might just have a different flavor than your neighbor. Come on. We've all got some troubles going on. Everybody's got problems. The reality is we don't know our future or exactly how anything will play out. God does. It's that simple. It's that simple. When the future is in the hands of the almighty God who is capable of all things more than just able to do it, but exceedingly abundantly above all that we could ask or think or imagine, we can trust him with an absolute faith because we realize that God has never failed. He never has one time, and he is not about to start with you. He's not going to start failing now. What does this mean for you today? I'm getting ready to close in just a minute. What does this mean? Let your life lessons grow your faith in God. Don't let, them, don't let the devil use them to push you away from him. In all things that I face and go through, or if I pray for you and you come, you say, Pastor, pray for me. I'm going through this or struggling with this or that or whatever it is. My prayers are always 
It always includes, God, use this to draw them closer to you. Use this to pull me closer. Don't ever, don't let me drift, God. Use this and pull me closer. Draw me in. And I'll say it again. Stop jumping to quick, hasty decisions because you have been fearful or living in the unknown or having some pain in your life. Let the presence of God be your first priority. Let him be the source of peace that you really need. Is is all of this real hard to do in just a moment whenever it's you going through it? Absolutely. It is. It's tough. We say all this, and we can say it when it's not us going through it. Can I tell you, the circumstances certainly make a difference. I mean, when it's you going through it, it's easy to encourage somebody else, but when it's you going through it, it's a different, it's an entirely different thing. And God is ever trustworthy, and regardless of the road that your life may be going down tonight, it's, it's certain, one thing is absolutely certain, that God will never, ever allow you to face that alone. You've never cried one tear by yourself. You've never prayed one prayer that God didn't hear. You've never just been somewhere or in something that God didn't see or didn't see you coming in your life. God can be trusted with all things, all scenarios, every storm, every, every trial that you go through, family. Through your loss, through your hurt and pain, through the failing health, through life's tests, the trials, the tragedies, Jesus is trustworthy. God is ever available. The disciples had to learn a valuable lesson at the Sea of Galilee. The lesson was this. Don't ever count God out. Don't ever count him out just because you have exhausted all of your other resources and you don't have anything else that you can do. Sometimes God likes when you are at the end of your rope because that is the beginning of him. Get through all of your options, get through all of your plans, and then let God begin to do what he was trying to do all along. He was always there. God does not leave you. Your Bible said that he doesn't forsake you. He always has your best interest in mind. He's always available to those who call on the precious name of Jesus. There is still peace in his name. And lastly, I just want to remind you that God is ever enough. Again, the situation may be out of your control, certainly, as God lives Sometimes there are rough situations that could be ahead of every one of us in this room. But he will always be everything that you will ever need. Isaiah the prophet said like this in chapter 45 of the book that bears his name. Look to me. The Lord spoke to this great prophet. He said, look to me and be saved, all you ends of the earth. For I am God and there is no other. God is God alone. He stands on his own. He is our help. Come on, nobody voted him in. He can't be voted out. He can never be impeached. He can never be, you know, he can't be removed. There is no successor or predecessor. He is God all by himself. And he is our hope, and there is strength and life in him. He's all powerful, all present, and all perceiving. God addresses your fear. He addresses your faith, and then he reminds you that you do have a future in Christ Jesus. There is a plan for you in God. There is a season that you will come out of, and God said there is a season that you will step into. It won't always be like this. Winter changes to spring, and spring changes to summer. Before you know it, it's going to be fall quickly. Lord Jesus, back in June, Hobby Lobby done had Christmas stuff out. Come on. I mean, like, seasons change just as quick as you know it. It's going to change, and while you're in this thing, kicking and screaming, white-knuckling with the Holy Ghost, gripping onto this for your dear life, all of a sudden, God will create a shift. Seasons will change. And you'll see what he was up to all along. There's no wonder the great prophet Isaiah prophesied that his name would be called Wonderful, Counselor, Mighty God. He said he would be the Prince of Peace. Yeah, because when you feel like your life is out of control, it's chaotic and you're attacked on every side, going to war, it feels like every day Jesus is going to be there. And he's there to address fear and he replaces it with peace that's just unexplainable. Anybody ever been through a situation you feel like you should have been losing your ever-loving mind and all of a sudden you just feel like this really is going to be okay? There's a peace that doesn't even make sense. It just comes over you. There's just a comfort and a peace that you can't even explain. That is what it is to experience peace in Jesus. That is what it is to experience the grace and the power that is in his name. I have seen people that have stood beside the casket of their loved ones and sit there in the strength of God and, and, and we're encouraging other people coming through that line because they had peace in the Holy Spirit. They had peace in Jesus knowing that God was there and that he was going to truly give them the strength to continue on in their lives. 
He's there to address fear, and he truly replaces it with peace that's unexplainable. The question is this, will you trust him when you're afraid, and do you trust him even when you cannot see? Let him be your first option and your first source of peace. He never runs out of it. He never runs out of peace. He never runs short of it. He's got plenty to offer you this evening, and the only thing that he asks is just come to me, and he will speak that word, peace be still. Father, we love you tonight. We give you praise, and we're thankful for your word. We are thankful for such an experience in your word that we can, we can take and apply to our lives today. Father, I just want to take a moment to pray and intercede for any person in this place or under the sound of my voice that is experiencing turmoil in their lives or a season, God, where they are struggling with some sickness or pain or uh, loss or tragedy or issues going on in their home or job or whatever that may be. Father, in the name of Jesus, I pray tonight that you would encourage your people Lift us up and allow the power of the Holy Spirit to minister in and through us tonight, God. Speak a word to your people. Peace be still. God, allow it to pass our understanding. Allow us to have peace that will give someone in this place the best night's sleep tonight that they've ever had. God, I pray that you would show them that when the hand of God is on their life, that you truly are not in short supply of peace and power. God, you are truly walking on top of those things that bother us. They are under the feet of Jesus, and you still have a name that is exalted above every name. God, we love you tonight, and we're grateful that there is peace found in you. And I pray and speak that and over these people tonight, that the people of God would experience peace in their homes, their jobs. God, show them favor. I pray that you would just begin to move and meet on every need as you're able to tonight. God, we love you. We have faith in you, and we trust the name of Jesus even when we cannot see we ask all of these things in the precious name of Jesus. And everybody said, amen. Come on, give the Lord some praise one more time before we get ready to leave. Thank you so much for being here. So good to see you all. Don't forget Sunday. Please be here. If you love me, you'll be here. Come on. No, I'm kidding. But please try to be here Sunday morning if you can. 1030 is going to be such a special day in the Lord's house. And I can't wait to see you. Bring somebody with you. Don't come alone. It's going to be good. Uh, just don't forget about those few things. And I hope to see you Sunday morning. Thank you again for being here. I love you all. And I'll see you Sunday morning. Bless you.